<clears throat> oh, see, that's the way to start a video. <laughs> so, uh, how's it going, man? Um, today is Sunday. It's Sunday night. It's uh, November 7th. And I realized uh, that when I did my uh, Foo Fighters upgrade uh, video, that I omitted a couple of pieces that I really wanted to include. Certainly one that I had included in the previous video, and I, the first one that I did, and then I forgot, forgot to include it. And then another one that was a, uh, a 10 inch record that uh, I don't think I've ever shown off yet. So I'm gonna do it over again probably delete that uh that second upgrade well maybe i'll leave it there i don't know anyway it's actually the one of the pieces that i omitted is actually the first piece that i included uh in the first video and that is this neapolitan metropolitan uh box set of three uh three seven inch eps and it includes A track from Dave Grohl's Pocket Watch release, which was a cassette-only release. You could only get it on cassette, you know, until you could burn it to uh, CDR yourself, which is what I did. And, of course, I have that collection right here. pocket watch tried to duplicate the uh the artwork <laughs> and um so here's one of the yeah, my ocd has it makes me do these things so pocket watch plus by the artist called late And so here's the track listing that I have of all the material. F it was pre Foo Fighters, um, you know, pre, yeah, pre Foo Fighters. The Foo Fighters album was the first album and all these tracks here that were, uh, you can see the titles are from the album. I think these are all demos that I located online. And then some, I guess some outtakes. Mountain of Youth, Hooker on the Street, and Butterflies. All right? Like I said in the first video, I don't know. Like, I'm no expert on this material. I just know what was on the um, original release. It was easy to find this stuff online on YouTube, what, four or five years ago? It was easy to find it. And so I compiled you know, this package and then, and then found these, these other extra tracks. I don't know much about Mountain of Youth, Hooker on the Street, and Butterflies. Butterflies is such a cool track, too. That, that sounds like something that would have been on Pocket Watch. Maybe uh, it was a little too, I don't know, it's about butterflies, so maybe he didn't want to put that on there. I don't know. What's wrong with butterflies? I like butterflies. But uh, anyway, <coughs> I have it listed as uh, tracks 1 through 10 are from Pocket Watch. Tracks 11 through 13 are outtakes, those three tracks I just listed. And tracks 14 through 22 are demos. Uh, and in fact, tracks 14, the, tr the tracks, track number 14 and track number 22 were somewhat incomplete and were repaired or corrected by looping sections of the track, or extended, I should say, by looping sections of the track. So I just, I manipulated the, uh, the files to extend them a little bit and make it something that would be kind of cool to listen to, I guess. Um, but anyway... <laughs> so weird. That's, that's what I put on the inside here. I think some of this was 
artwork from that period. So, uh, this is what he did after, um, I, you, did he do it after? Yeah, this was stuff that he did back in 1990 in Arlington, Virginia. Recorded December 23rd, 1990. Oh, that's six of the tracks. And then four of the tracks were recorded July 27th on 1991. Here. Right there. Okay. So if you want to freeze that. And then I just put that stuff there. I don't even know if that's stated on the triple vinyl compilation, Neapolitan Metropolitan. Oh yeah, okay. So there. All right. So this is from this is from the CD anyway, CDR that I burned to capture these tracks, man, that uh, I otherwise didn't have. And um, and I guess most people probably didn't have because I don't know who knew about Pocket Watch. It took a while for me to find out about it. Um, it wasn't like something that was really advertised or publicized, right? So. But here you got 79 minutes and 54 seconds worth of music on here. I really packed it in there. Uh, I'll put this here. So, Late is the artist. And uh, on, on Pocket Watch, it was called Petrol CB. Uh, it's AKA, there's that song. And here's the record that it is on. There's that song. And man, I love it. I think that is such a really, just a really great, really mean piece of music. I love, well, maybe not mean, but it's just really great, really kind of intense. And Dave is just a genius. It's so obvious that Dave is a brilliant, it's, he just oozes music. Dave Grohl, talking about him. Not my brother, Dave Mayulo. Dave Mayulo is a good guy, too. He's that physics guy. You could have seen him off Broadway a couple of years ago. Maybe he'll get back to doing that after this COVID bullshit. But anyway, so there's, uh, there's the first recorded uh, piece of music by uh, Dave Grohl before... Uh, Foo Fighters, and I love this box. I think that all, all the music on here is actually pretty interesting. It's got my, one of my other uh, favorite bands, Fudge, on here. But uh, that's not what this video is about. It's about Foo Fighters. So here. Uh, here is, this is a call in Winnebago. This is, um, I think, the first seven-inch record by Foo Fighters released. This is a British import. Uh, Winnebago is a non-album B-side. Here's the record. This is a call. Side two. Winnebag Winnebago. Winnebago. So, um, this is great, man. This is a call. The sleeve is hmm, dinged up just a little bit, but don't bother me none. <clears throat> See this? Right. 
I love it. Here's the second one, I'll stick around. This is the special red vinyl edition. I'm wondering if there uh, were any on black vinyl. Uh, all right, I don't know. All right. First lineup. Goldsmith on the drums. But I think it's Dave who plays on all these tracks. I think he plays all the instruments on all these tracks. So here's um there's this beautiful, it's like almost like an orange red, orange red vinyl. And here. Get over here. Yeah, you can see through it anyway. Yeah, you can see the marble in there now, right? With the B-side, How I Miss You. Nice. How I Miss You. Really good songwriter this guy <clears throat> I'll stick around Here is, uh, the, I believe, the third single from the album, For All the Cows, and Watershed Live at Reading. Reading Festival Radio 1, so this is a BBC track. From uh, August 26, 1995 at the Reading Festival. Hold on a second. Seems a little dark. I don't know why. I wonder what that's about. But anyway, for all the cows. disc right there's the a side there's the b side watershed live right yeah oh yeah now you can see it right cool man i love that I wonder why the red one, it didn't show up in the red one so much. I have no idea why. But you could sure see that marble, uh, that blue marble vinyl uh, through the light on this one. Pretty cool. <clears throat> I 
And then this, uh, this one, um, Big Me. And this is actually an EP. Big Me and Floaty are on side A. And Gas Chamber is the second track. I mean, is the uh, <laughs> is the B side track the second track? Yee! And this is joke. This is kind of a joke, man. I you could tell these guys got a sense of humor because they're fucking. Um, excuse me. Sorry. Sorry about that. They are. They put two two songs on this side, side A. And then one song on this side. And the two songs together are about maybe six or seven minutes long combined. And Gas Chamber is about 39 seconds. So go figure. All right? And there you go again here. Marble. This white marble finish. Really great, man. What a cool looking record. So. So it's kind of a joke, you know, you play the side A and it's like maybe six or seven minutes long. And then you play side B. And before you sit down, it's over. <laughs> I love these guys. I love uh that sense of humor and i love uh and i love the music uh i think i'm really partial to the early the earlier tracks quite frankly but um i played their last album and i really really thought it was good so um the one thing that i wasn't too keen on was their five song EP I can't remember what it's called but I have a copy of it and I don't know maybe I need to just crank it up again and just check it out all right so anyway that's the fourth single which is actually a three song EP for all from the first album and now we're looking at the color and the shape and here's monkey wrench and um, with another joke, the B-side, that is a non-album track called The Color and the Shape. So the title track didn't make it to the album. It did make it to, to the single. And there's side A. There's side B. I don't know. Well, yeah. Yeah, I got it right. <laughs> so that's side B. The color and the shape. Uh, it's a wild track. Oops. Here. So... British import. The color and the shape. Yeah, I think it's funny how the title track isn't on the album, but it's on this the back of this single. But, you know, at least they made it available for you to listen to somehow. Oh, it's on, uh, it's on the back of a, or it's on the back. It's on a CD single, too. You know, CD singles, you don't have to flip them over. So I don't know what I'm talking about on the back. So here is my copy of Everlong. This one was not cheap. This one cost some money. Uh, I really, really wanted it. 
So I contacted the seller who seemed to indicate that the corners were a little frayed. Yeah, the corner's a little bit frayed, not, not the corner. So it's really in really good shape. So Everlong, okay, again, it's on this really cool blue marble finish and it's got a B-side, uh, a non-album track called Drive Me Wild, which is cool. And uh, let's see, the blue marble finish again, well, there you go. There, maybe that should be my uh, my thumbnail. There, I'll hold that for a second. It's never gonna happen. <laughs> my thumbnails all look stupid. But <clears throat> that makes sense because all my videos are pretty stupid anyway. I mean, I'm just showing you what I have. But that's what I like to do. I like making these videos. <clears throat> yeah, the corners are slightly frayed, man. But boy, I, I told the guy, oh, man. I can deal with that. With this, that, and this. I can, I can live with that. This thing's really in great shape, quite frankly. And the record itself is in... Uh, is in great shape as well. So I'm very, very pleased with this. <coughs> yep, here is my hero. And uh, this is the one that comes in the clear package that was all hosed up. Uh, I will show it to you. package but it all got mangled up in the back so what I you know what kind of artwork is this anyway to I mean that's no I don't know I don't know why they uh they couldn't just produce a regular picture sleeve for it but this is what they did in England maybe it was cheaper all right so here's a red just a clear red record with my hero and dear lover, dear lover on the B side, which is uh, the last track on the Japanese CD. That's the extra track on the Japanese CD. That was what I picked up when the album came out back in 97 and uh, I played the heck out of it. I just played, I played it a ton. Really loved it. Really love this album. Uh, and I like this, even if the packaging's all beat up, I like this single, so. Um, all right, there's that. And those are the three singles that I have from uh, the color and the shape. And then I have, uh, what's this album? I have never remember it. Oh, There's Nothing Left to Lose. I got one single from that album. Generator, and I like Generator, and I like the B-side, Fraternity, which was uh, the bonus track, um, I think on the Japanese release again, which I have. <clears throat> Oops. Hmm. And there, I like the custom, uh, again, these custom labels do not disappoint. I like that a lot. And there's Fraternity. That's the B side with Fraternity. Same custom label as side A. Oops. 
and this single, this cover and the record itself are in beautiful shape. A little bit of a, a bend at the edge there, but beautiful. You see any flaws in that? I don't. All right, now here we, uh, we get to um, one by one. And uh, this is a, uh, a, a pressing from the EU. Uh, All My Life, and uh, that's the album version of All My Life and Sister Europe on the B side. All right. Sister Europe. Import pressing of a single. Hmm. Nice. It's wild because, uh, these weren't too expensive getting stuff from uh one one by one and i would love to hear uh the abandoned the tracks from the abandoned uh first uh, your earlier sessions you know they um uh, this was a tough this was a tough album for them to make for some reason they were they were recording tracks initially and just didn't like what they were what they were putting out so i i'm so curious to hear what those tracks must sound like i would love if they would put out a, a, a repress of this album one by one expand it with maybe some uh some of those abandoned tracks. Maybe, uh, maybe if they listen to them again, maybe they'll think, well, you know, this wasn't that bad. It just wasn't what we were. It wasn't us at that moment. But I would like to to know what was it that they didn't like. I would like to hear them. Stuff like that fascinates the hell out of me, and I would think would fascinate any any Foo Fighters fan. You know, I don't know. What do you guys think? And this has the B side. Danny says, by the Ramones. Is it the Ramones? I think it is. Danny says. Oh, and this um, this record plays at thirty-three and a third. Um, I think this might be a uh, domestic pressing. Oh yeah, and then uh, also came with this insert sessions insert. What do I know? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what this is. But it's in my... It's in my... It's in my record sleeve. My record picture sleeve. So, there you go. Exactly the same looking B-side, except there's no barcode. Oh, and... Um, what the hell is this? I don't know what this is. I don't think that means it's cut out. But there's like a little, there's like a little tab there. I have no idea what that's about. Like a die cut sleeve where they created that little tab. I, I don't know what that is. I don't know. All right, so all my life, right? Two, two versions of all my life, and then um, low. 
another import. I believe this is a British import. Never Talking to You Again is a uh, is by Husker Du, another cus uh, another cover track. Uh, Never Talking to You Again live. It's not even two minutes long. It's real short. All right, so that's the back of the sleeve. But I love this beautiful numbered two. We got two numbered sleeves here. I, I didn't even point that out this time. But one of the, the first one that I showed you from this album was a numbered. Uh, picture sleeve, and this is 525 of um, of this of this issue. 525, hmm. whatever. I think I may have said that those numbered numbered items really don't phase me too much. I don't understand it. It's limited edition. I know. I know the Beatles did it first. I guess right. And then here is Have It All and Disenchanted Lullaby. So, uh, man, this thing's in beautiful shape. Uh, it's absolutely, if I was going to call a record cover mint, this would be it. It's like it was never touched by human hands until it showed up in my place. It's just in perfect condition. And the record is real clean, too, so... Yeah, this was nice. This was a real nice, uh, this was a real nice grab. And, and they were not expensive. I don't know. Ah. Uh, and then, uh, In Your Honor, their fifth studio album. Here's Best of You. And the B-side is FFL. Right. Yeah. A little dust. It's like little paper from the, uh, from the picture sleeve. So best of you and and I like the I did mention this on the previous video. Uh, I like the color scheme. You got black on uh, olive green and then you got olive green on black. FFL or full. <laughs> Whatever FFL is. Uh, singles from In Your Honor, I picked these up um, at the time that the album was released. So I owned these right away. I wish I started going, checking out their back catalog back then to get these earlier singles because, man, they're expensive now. But uh, anyway, here is, I think that's a domestic pressing and this is made in the EU best of you the B-side is spill 
and spill is, I believe, is only available on this single. I don't think it was a, I don't think it was uh, released on a CD single. So, best of you, different color scheme, but the same concept, just different colors, and spill is the B-side, and I believe is is not available anywhere else. I think it's only available on this single. Or maybe it was available as a stream, I don't know. But I, I, I don't believe it was uh, pressed on a CD is what I'm saying. I don't think so. <clears throat> I pressed it on a CDR. I burned it to CDR so I could have it available digitally but um listen to it in my car all right so all right and then uh resolve another uh import pressing from the eu with uh, a demo called World. Black and black on blue. Just the titles, though. And then uh, DOA, right? With the canary in the uh, bird cage, right? And uh, razor acoustic on the B side. And this has uh, this is in uh, canary colored vinyl. I like that, and I love the uh, that custom label. How beautiful is that? And they did it again here. They just reversed it, kind of. Uh, just cool, man. A white label and a black label. Oh, here. Let's see what this looks like. You find the road. Yep. Look at that. That's cool. Another opportunity for a for a thumbnail. So there. Yeah, man. And I have two copies of this. I picked up two because I it was so beautiful. I I said I want another one. <laughs> record collectors do weird shit and uh, I've done that before and I'll do it again probably alright so there's that <clears throat> and there's that and uh, two more singles from um uh, What's it called? Uh, Echo, si Echo, Silence, Patience, and Grace. Their sixth studio album. 
Long Road to Ruin. I picked this up right away. Uh, besides Holiday in Cambodia. Serge Tankian, Tankian, Serge Tankian. I think he sings lead on this. All right, so. Long Road to Ruin. Holiday. see it I deliver if you want to see what I have I'm happy to show it to you I like how this sleeve doesn't want to fit And um, the Pretender. I think they only had two vinyl uh, singles from this album, and the B side is "Bangin'." And "Bangin'" is another track exclusive to uh, a seven-inch B side. They started doing that back there in the. Um, mid 2000s started making it so you know you gotta buy the uh, the vinyl single I was only too happy to oblige I always like uh, color vinyl is this a marble? nah well yeah a little bit huh not really the B side is banging and banging again that was just a vinyl only b-side i believe uh unless they are streaming it i don't believe it was on a cd single all right of course there were tracks that were on cd single that were not on vinyl so there you go i guess they just wanted i don't know what what was the point of that you know because they the record companies were pushing cds CD singles, they sure did for um, uh, there's no there's nothing left to lose. When that album came out, man, they put out two or three uh, CD singles per song. So, all right, and then there's this cool thing. This was a record store day. a record store day release songs Foo Fighters songs from the laundry room and uh, here this package is elaborate so so this is I guess this was Dave uh, some recordings by Dave before um, before Foo Fighters first album came out before he even recorded it maybe look at this it comes in this neat sleeve and um Side A is Alone and Easy Target and Big Me. 
I believe these are just demos. But I really like I really like this package. Yeah, cool on a 10 inch record, man. And uh, the B side is Kids in America, that Kim Wilde song. We're the kids in America. Uh -oh. And Empty Handed. I don't know if Empty Handed is a um, cover song. I don't know who did it. Empty Handed. I don't know. So, anyway, songs from the laundry room. And uh, just trying to be real careful with this because it's not a line sleeve. RCA. There's the spine, so Foo Fighters. Songs from the laundry room. Oh, and yeah, this is very elaborate. So here. It's like a huge, a huge cassette, big 10 inch cassette tape, which won't fit in your player. So thankfully it'll fit on my turntable. All right, so. Can you see this stuff here? Alone and Easy Target, Big Me, Kids in America, Empty Handed. Recorded a, um, Big Me recorded at the Laundry Room Studio on March 9th, 1994. Uh, Alone and Easy Target was uh, from 1992. January 3rd, 1992. All instruments and vocals by Dave Grohl. Background vocals on Kids in America by Barrett Jones. Yeah, recorded and mixed by Barrett Jones. Empty Handed was uh, was written by that was written by Dave too. Empty Handed. Huh. There you go. So there. So there. <laughs> so this is cool, man. I like this. Put it in like this so that you can see the spine. Very, very unconventional. It was trying to be conventional. The hell with that. <clears throat> All right, so that's everything, man. Uh, another 50 minutes worth of video. Uh, I hope um, I hope I didn't screw this one up, <laughs> or I'll have to do it over again subject all you people to uh, watch another video of this crap. All right, I hope uh, hope you liked it. See you later.